Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr, and you're listening to Fiber Talk, the twice weekly podcast for needlework artists. And our guest this week, Kimberly Jolly from the Fat Quarter Shop. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, how are you? I'm going to be all right. Curious, uh, you're one of the few people who had an established corporate career and left it to do this needlework thing. Because you were an accountant, right? Yeah, I'm a CPA, and I was working for some venture capitalists, and it was right when the stock market tanked, and I thought, you know, I'm probably not going to have a job soon. So I thought, well, I'll just be a stay-at-home mom, and I'll just sell sell a little bit of fabric from home. So that's kind of where the idea came from (laughs) and turned into something completely else. Yeah, those kinds of situations when you you don't know if you're going to have a job and do you really want to start down that path of finding another one and yeah if you have an alternative you start to look at it pretty seriously. Uh so have you always always done some kind of uh a needlework making making of things? So I've always been super crafty. The first thing I learned when I was 5, there was a huge storm in Austin and we were at my grandmother's house and we could not leave because we were like flooded in. And I was bored, and I said, okay, show me how. And so she crocheted. So Mm. she showed me how to crochet, so I started there. And then maybe when I was a teenager, I learned cross-stitch, and I kind of dabbled in that a little bit. And I always wanted to learn how to quilt, and I didn't learn until after I was out of college. So, So, Do you still do the the, uh, crochet? No. No. I made, you know, blankets when I had babies. And Stand, yeah, um, that's just, standard, it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it just takes up. I think yarn just takes up too much space for me. Oh, okay, all right. So then the cross stitch, you you did you pick that up when you were uh, in your teens, or is that something you just were interested in and got to later? No, um, one of my mom's friends taught me when I was a teenager, and we lived in the country, you know, way before there was cable TV, and all there was to do was go outside and sit inside, and my mom did not like (laughs) us to go outside when she was at work, so we were pretty much stuck inside with five TV channels, and so I just decided to craft, and I would just sit at home, and I would just craft, and just stitch stuff. My mom would take me to Michael's like once every six months and whatever she got me had to last for that amount of time. And that's how I entertained myself. The six month trip to resupply Kimberly. Yep. (laughs) So is it uh, an art, art orientation that you have? Uh, I mean, to be an accountant, that that usually doesn't speak much to the artist, but uh, just the other side of your brain just wants to make things. Yeah, I'm pretty hyper. So I like to always be doing something. So I'm not one of those people that can sit in front of a TV and watch a TV show. That would never happen. Like you would never just find me sitting in front of a TV. That is like way too boring. So I've always got to be moving. I've always got to be doing something, you know, and so it's just always moving my hands. And my husband has always told my kids, even if your mom didn't have this business, your mom would be doing something. She would never just be sitting there. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so I think it's just a, you know, just keeping my mind going because, you know, using up my energy somehow. Right. Channel it, channel it through thread and cloth. Yes. Yeah. 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 So then the, the, wh- where does the quilting come in? So I was literally driving down the street one day and I saw a little sign and it said quilt, sh- quilt store. And I said, oh, let me go in there. And I took a couple of classes and I did get frustrated at first because the store had so many rules and, uh, (laughs) you know, so many like you have to do this and you have to do that. And I'm not somebody who really, um, I guess, doesn't really play well with rules sometimes. And so I got frustrated because there was no creativity And, you know, they only wanted to use a certain kind of thread. You couldn't use anything else and only certain kind of fabric. So I eventually found another store that would kind of let me. That's kind of hard to expand. That's hard to expand your business if you're you're limiting your students. (laughs) Well, and it was also kind of at the time where long arm quilting had just started. Uh And they were so against that. And. I'm oh thinking my. <laughs> that would be great. And so it was just like they were limiting me on the thread and they didn't want you to send your stuff to long armors. And 
there were just a lot of rules. So I found another store that had a really great teacher. She, her name is Debbie Taylor, and she ended up working for me for a long time, and she taught me. And so once she taught me, you know, she didn't have any rules, and so then I kind of went from there. <laughs> Uh, so was, was Debbie one who got frustrated with the other shop and went and started her own business? <laughs> no, no, no. She just, uh, there were just two, two stores two in stores. the town and I didn't even know the other store existed. Um, and just, I think I was at work one day and, um, someone had told me about it and I just went there at lunch one day. Yeah. So <laughs> freedom, freedom yes. I can create. <laughs> uh, so you, so then, so that then frees your mind then. So you're able to, to actually see what you can do and test the limits. Yeah. And then it was about the time that Alex Anderson had simply quilts. And then I started watching her every morning and, you know, she had a TV show that was, I think it was on five days a week. And so with her, it really helped me because she had different people come in and they taught all different kinds of things. And so it just kind of helped me because it was even, I mean, the internet was around, but there definitely wasn't YouTube or tutorials or anything. So just the fact that just the fact that Alex Anderson had that TV show that really helped me too. Uh -huh. So did you become one of those? Now, see, I have a uh, my dad's wife uh, used to do quilting, and she had a room that just quickly became filled with a table, and then shelves and shelves of fat quarters, I assume, but just cloth upon cloth. Is that did that? Is that what happened to you? Um, kind of. I've been pretty good about not having too much of a stash. I have always tried to just buy for the project I'm working on. So I haven't been out of control with my fabric, but I would say I'm a little bit out of control with maybe my sewing machines and the amount of thread that I have. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> that's the way it manifests. I got to have more yes. machines. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you, so you have you still have a room you have a room in the house where you have all that contained. I do. It's a it's just a like a home office type situation, and um, yeah, it's you can barely walk in there. There's so much <laughs> furniture, and I keep adding you know pieces of furniture because I need more storage. So I think no matter how big my room was, it would be packed with yeah. floss or cabinets or knickknacks or anything yeah the storage becomes the issue at some point you know? yeah yeah it's got to get put away somewhere it can't just be laying out yeah i have a i have a table that every now and then has to go through a complete cleaning because i get down to the two foot by two foot space where i can work and um yeah it needs needs recontrolling yep yep so the so you you you're making quilts, raising kids, and then at what juncture does the uh, Fat Quarter Shop become reality? Is it kind of a, a sudden thing, or is it? did you start small and start helping people out, and it just grows from there? So it started before I had kids. It started about three months into my marriage, and... Um, I used to just, I had a corporate job for about a year, but I used to just ship at night and on the weekends. And then, you know, I worked out of my house a year or two, went to a a location near my house, hired a couple of college kids, then Kevin quit his job. And then it kind of just, you know, when Kevin came on, he understood all the technology and all the stuff that we needed to do to automate things, make things faster. And then we were able to actually grow the company. Yeah. Well, I'm interested. That interests me, the, the evolution there from being a quilt maker, a hobbyist, if you will. And then what what happens that you start supplying for other people? So back then, I used to want to only make my quilts from one collection. I never wanted to mix collections because I didn't know how to play with color. So I always wanted a fat quarter bundle. And every time I went to the store, there was never a fat quarter bundle. And I don't know. I just thought, well, I'll set up a, I'll set up a wholesale account and I'll sell fat quarter bundles on Etsy. Not Etsy, um, eBay. Back then yeah. it was just eBay. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I'll just do this. I'll buy. And then that way I can have fat quarter bundles for myself. And then I just kind of started selling. And um, I realized it could work because back then there were only a 
you know, there was a few quilt shops online, but not many. And I was able to somehow get in the search engines and it just all kind of went from there. But I didn't have kids for about four years. Oh, so you had a legitimate chance to get this on its feet then. Yeah, there's no way I could have done it um, <laughs> with young kids. No way. <laughs> no. Well, that's what I was. That, that's what I was wondering because, yeah, that um, that changes the game overnight. Yep. Yeah. And so that so then that all right. So I see how that happens. Then you 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 basically serving your your own personal needs, and then uh, what somebody says, well, can you get some of that for me? And it grows from there. Yep, and it was just easy. You know, you could put it on, you just put it online and buy a couple and, you know, it sell. And it was easy to get in the search engines because it was before there were, you know, so many quilt shops. And um, it was before there were so many designers. Back then, it was just Robin Pandoff. She was the only designer. And so it was way before everything kind of grew into what it is now. Mm -hmm. And you drag your husband into this. Has he... I mean, is it just, just because he's helping you out or does he have interest in, in, uh, these things? Um, he loves technology and I think it's his dream job. Um, um, he gets to do, you know, search engine optimization, building a shopping cart, shipping software, negotiating contracts, all the yucky stuff that I would never want to do or know how to do. Um, anything to solve a problem. He is, um, he was a CPA, but he actually hated it. Oh. He got his degree and was like, what am I doing? Why did I major in this? This is not, he just didn't enjoy it. I actually enjoyed it. Um, so this I think is perfect. Um, he buys all the fabric with me. He does. It's great. And people always say, I don't know how you work together and we just do it. It works for us. Yeah. Well, my wife and I work together all day long, every day. So, yeah, people people wonder that too. How do you do it? But it just it just works. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So you gave him the perfect playground then. Yep, and and we're pretty good about you know I kind of do my stuff, he does his stuff. There's some stuff we do together, but we definitely do our own things so that we don't have to, you know, infringe on each other's space. Yeah. So if there's something with the website, you know, he does it and that's that, you know, and, I don't is, know how to do any of that stuff <laughs> and don't want to, I gather. No, I don't. Um, at one time I thought maybe I should, uh, major in computer science and that would have been a nightmare. I don't think that would have ever worked out for me. <laughs> that's, so. inter that's interesting. Both of you go all the way through the CPA process. And, and, you know, he ends up hating it and, and you like it, but, but even, even there, uh, starting a business that gives you a huge advantage in that, uh, you have such a thorough understanding of, of the numbers end of things. Yeah. And it was easy to set up because, you know, I could understand, you know, account, I could understand QuickBooks and I could understand, you know, how to put together a financial statement really quick. And my old boss, that was my, he was my corporate boss. He did our, he did the fat quarter shop taxes for like three or four years, just as a favor for me. Oh. He liked doing it. And so, I mean, even in the first couple of years, I didn't even have to do my own taxes. I had a friend doing it. <laughs> That's a plus. That's huge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's because yeah, so many people start these needle arts businesses out of a hobby and then get forced to deal with the business end. So it, uh, the, the small number of you uh, uh, business owners who start from the business end, I mean, I think it really gives you a huge advantage in terms of, of vision and bu you know, business plan and handling all that stuff that, that is – is absolute drudgery or people end up having to hire it out just to be able to get it done and get it done right. So it gives you a real, a real leg up on that. Um, Cause you know, so many shop owners, I'm, you know, I'm sure if they could all sit in a room and be honest, would just rant and rave for hours about, you know, the business end of things and how they just really wanted to stitch. Yeah. 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 That's um, yeah. So that's, that's a, yeah, a definite plus there. So then, then you start it just starting on eBay, and then at, at some point it gets big enough where you have to go to a facility, outgrew the house? Yeah, we outgrew the house, and we rented like a small 2,000-square-foot 
it was part office, part warehouse, and it was unair conditioned. <laughs> and we did that for a couple of years until we decided that we probably needed air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we moved to another location. We were there maybe five years, and now we're at a different location. And I hope we can stay here. Yeah. Now you have enough space? Um, We're filling it up. Yeah. But... um. We're going to have to make it work because I don't want to move again. <laughs> yeah. At some point you get to a size where moving is monumental. Yeah. 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 And it's just, you know, it's hard. We're near Austin. There's not a lot of space. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, I, I can just imagine all that inventory you have to move and still do business. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, that's tough. So then, then where does, so, so the, the uh, quilting is, is, this is still all quilting at this juncture, I assume. I mean, it's, and, and then you have to decide, wait, wait, I got to hire some people too. That's always that, that uh, leap of faith there where you actually have to add staff and, uh, or, or decide not to grow one or the other. Yeah, I started with some college kids and, um, you know, that was a good start, but then, you know, you need full-time people. And so, um, some of the first few full-time people that we hired still, two of them still work to still work for us to this day. So we've had a lot of employees for a really long time. And, you know, in the very beginning, it was me and Kevin and we would cut the fabric, package it, ship it. We did all the things. And so, um, luckily now we don't have to do all of that. Um, because I think my back would hurt at this point in life, <laughs> but, um, you know, everything that's done here, we did at one point or another. Yeah. Well, and having longevity with employees is huge. That's, uh, yeah. that's difference making. Yeah. You can just turn it loose and not worry about it. Yeah. Yep. That's great. So where does where does cross stitch come in? Because that's where I first ran into you was was uh, cross stitch. Um, where where does that come in? Where, when do you start expanding your business to include cross stitch? So it was about a year, year and a half ago, and I had always wanted to add cross stitch to the business, and I just one day just decided let's do it, and so we started adding it to our quilting YouTube channel. And then people started getting really mad and they were like, we only want quilting. <laughs> so we had to divide it into another channel, which I was super nervous about because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to build a whole another channel. And it's actually worked out. Um, but yes, people definitely, they only want quilting or they want cross stitch, but they do not want them mixed. Mm -hmm. And we've had, you know, I think the biggest hurdle we've had is, you know, some, some people don't want to see both on one website. Um, but we've gone ahead with it and it's been fun. It's, it's, um, kind of changed up things in terms of just ideas and we've been able to integrate them together and it's just been a new adventure. Yeah. There, there is an, an element in the, uh, in the hobby, in the industry of crossover people, people who do both. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I don't don't be bringing in that quilting or don't be bringing in that cross stitch stuff. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, I can see that happening, no doubt. Yeah, so that um, so then the, the cross stitch. Yeah, it, you basically have to run parallel businesses. Yeah, we just treat it as one business, um, and we just buy for it separately. You know, I still do to this day. I do all the reorders. So, it, you know, when I do the reorders, I do quilting, you know, for a certain number of hours and then cross stitch a certain number of hours. And it lets me keep kind of an eye on what's still selling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I think I can add thread brands or fabric brands or, you know, it lets me know really what is selling and what we can or cannot add. Yeah. 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 You're, you're reminding me of uh, not too long ago, I was full-time editor for two magazines one architect and the other manufacturing and that, that's that same mental process all right this morning has got to be manufacturing and this afternoon i got to work on architecture and uh yep. yeah you really you have to keep shifting gears back and forth and every now and then they cross over and it uh yeah it gets to be a juggling act after a while yeah yeah 
So you do you still do you still personally do uh, quilting or? Oh you, yeah, I do yeah. it all. So I do most of my quilting on Saturdays and Sundays, and I can make a really big quilt really fast. I mean, I'm super fast, so I can do a quilt much faster than I can do a cross stitch project. So. I usually do my quilting on the weekends and my cross stitch at night, you know, after work, or maybe I can do a little bit during work um, or a little bit before work. Um, but usually quilting, once I start it, I can start and stop really. F I mean, I can start and finish something so fast that it's, and then people say, well, how did you do all that? And it's like, I really just go in the room and I cut piece. I mean, I go so fast that, Sometimes I can't even believe it, but I think because I've been quilting so long, it's just like second nature. You know, I can have the TV on, I can watch movies, never miss a beat. So I can just go really fast. So yeah, I do all of it. I love it. And, um, you know, my kids sit in the room with me and yeah, they like all of it. Yeah. So have you done, have you, uh, done quilt design? Have you gone that route at all? So that's how we started our It's So Emma brand, which we started, gosh, I don't know, maybe 12 years ago. And so that is our, we have quilt patterns, cross-stitch patterns. And at the very beginning, I did do design, but I'm going to be real honest. I have other people um, that work here that do most of the designs now. I would give um, them credit. Um, I don't really do the designing as much anymore. Mostly other people do it. And then we, you know, have outside authors yeah. But, you know, I don't think I'm as good at that as I am as, you know, just piecing something. <laughs> you can put it together, but designing it's a different, yeah. Well, it's a different yeah. beast all the way around. I mean, that's a different mentality if you're going to do it well. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I think if you have to sit and, you know, figure out where the colors go, that's half the battle. Mm -hmm. If you've got it drawn out and you know, drawn out and all your cutting instructions. I mean, I just, I literally just put it on a design board and just stack all my design boards, cut, you know, piece all of it at one time, get up, iron all of it at one time, go back to my machine. I try to be as, I always say it's like an assembly line in my sewing room. Yeah. Yeah. So the It's So Emma uh, starts out as a, a quilt design thing, but then uh, we have some cross stitch designs coming out of that too. Yeah, we do. We have some cross-stitch designs, some cross-stitch notions. We have some quilty notions, quilting books. It's kind of all all things crafty. Mm. Well, that's fun to have uh, have a, your own brand that you can use for those kinds of things, those, those kinds of outlets. Yeah, it's fun. It, it's, it's fun. We came up with an idea this morning for a, um, a cross-stitch notion. We don't know how we're going to implement it, but... It's kind of one of those things where it's like last night I was looking through some hand dyed thread and I was like, this is a mess. I need to figure, we need to figure out a storage solution for this stuff. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of fun to be able to create products that, you know, other people will like because it's something that's actually useful. Yeah. Hey, if you come up with something that works for thread storage, you're, you're going to be a hero more than anything. There's a, yeah, I hope. <laughs> There's a million ways it's to do it. Now. <laughs> it's so hard to keep all that stuff organized. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody, everybody has their system and, um, it seems like everybody has a system to a point and then it's just throw it in a drawer and hope. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's true. And then when it went in doubt, just go buy another skein at the store. It's easier. Yeah. Yeah. That was me last night. I ran out of thread and I was trying to find something and I just gave up and said, I'll just buy it at work tomorrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It really is easier. Yeah. 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 I have a, I have an app and another app and a list and a, this and a, that. And yeah, I just go buy another skein. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. So where, where are you at with, with the cross stitch? Uh, I mean, I've, I've watched a few of your, of your videos. You seem to, seem to be actively stitching all of the time and uh, um, really keeping that going, which I, which I think is impressive given that you're also making quilts and running a business. The fact that you have any time to, to stitch is impressive. But, um, so I can do it at my desk too. So, you know, part of my 40 hour work day, I kind of throw that stitching in. I would say during mania, I'm kind of a maniac in terms of like really getting stuff done because I never want to get on my channel and 
you know, not have something. I don't ever want to have a floss tube channel where people go and there's nothing there. So I just kind of go crazy and stitch a lot of stuff, stay up late, get up early, but I'm super efficient. Um, you'll never find me unless I'm about to fall asleep. I'm never like on my phone playing games until I'm about to fall asleep. You know, I'm always just going, going, going. So, um, and I kind of plan my week out and I have a whole spreadsheet even for like from now until the end of June on what I'm going to be stitching or quilting every day that I know of. And then I just give myself goals and say, okay, this is this week. I need this done. And I just figure out how to do it. Yeah. I, I watched your, um, your setup of your mania month. And uh, I, I have to say, I, I'm sure my jaw dropped in, in terms of uh, with your notebook and all your uh, project bags, holy smokes, you, you put some time into organizing that. I did. And, you know, I um, I had all that in a bucket and I had a car accident. And the first thing I thought when I had that car accident is I hope my cross stitch is not messed up. And it wasn't, but my bucket broke. Oh, no. <laughs> so that bucket broke. So the, the bucket disappeared. And that's why. But I was, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super organized just by nature. Um, everything in my house is super organized. And I think that's how I'm able to get so much done is just setting goals for myself. And if I tell myself I can do it, I can do it. It's just like the CPA exam. You know, when I was younger, people would say, how are you going to do all that? And I'm just like, you can do it. And I did like took the test, passed it. You just keep going. It's just, yeah. you know, you just set goals for yourself. You do it. You move to the next thing. Well, but, but where is, you know, and that's, that's all admirable, but where do you find the joy in that? Is, is the joy executing the plan? I, do, I don't know. I just have fun. Um, I think it's fun to stitch different things. I think the joy is finishing things. I get to watch TV while I do it. I think that's also part of it. You know, I binge all kinds of true crime. I'm a true crime junkie. And so part of it is I could sit and yesterday I watched a documentary. It was five hours. I stitched through the whole thing. And it's almost like you forget you're stitching because you're watching a documentary at the same time. Okay. And you know, if I don't like something, if I start something and I don't like it, I'll just stop and admit it. And I'll just say, you know, I don't want to finish this. I don't like it. Okay. I'll so never you're... make myself finish something that I, you know, I'm not enjoying. So you're over that hump then. Cause that, yeah. it, some people struggle with that. Oh, I started it. I got to finish it, but. Yeah, yeah I, I did that last year for Mania. After Mania, I just didn't finish a lot of it. And so I actually gave them, gave away some of the things that I had kitted in my in my live stream. I said, you know, I'm never going to finish this. Let me give it to somebody else. So, yeah, if I start something and I don't like it, I'm not afraid to admit it and say, you know, I really don't like this. And then with Mania, I divided up several big projects into smaller projects so that I knew I could actually do it. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of starting 31 different projects that's totally unachievable <laughs> yeah that i've never quite got that uh i mean i i would never even try any of that mania stuff it just it doesn't interest me but that new project every day of the month i just can't even comprehend number one the the decision making in terms of what you're going to start each day and then the investment to buy each of those projects and there's just no way that you're going to finish them all. Uh, some are just going to get set aside, and some you're just going to not like. And, uh, yeah, I've, I, I, anybody who does that, I admire it. And I've seen a couple people who have gone through the entire month and kept going and finished them. And, like, wow, I, I, that's like uh, full coverage people. I have such admiration for them but no interest in what they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that, yeah, you you seem to have a, a more sane approach this year to it. Look like you at least had achievable things. Yeah, I finished five or six things already, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. I picked smaller things, you know, stuff that I just really liked. And, you know, if you stitch what you like, it'll get done because you'll want to get it done. So then what what do you do the rest of the year? Do you set, you set goals for your stitching the rest of the year, or are you driven more by – projects that you're doing uh with fat quarter shop i pretty much don't do any personal things outside of fat quarter shop most you know anything that i quilt it's for work or anything that i cross stitch it's for work i mean eventually it gets to my house some at some point but 
my quilting is pretty set because, you know, we do a charity quilt every year. We do a designer mystery quilt every year. We do a couple of books every year. And so I kind of know what months I'm going to ha be heavy on quilting. And then we have a lot of sample makers who make quilts here and they love to make the samples. So I really don't have to make as much as I used to. And I pick and choose. If I really love something, I will make it. And if I don't love something, then somebody else would, you know, that likes that style will make it. Mm -hmm. So most, most everybody at, uh, at the company uh, stitches or makes quilts. Yeah, I mean, some do, some don't. Most people who do now started without learning. They didn't know how to stitch or quilt, and then they get the bug, mm -hmm. and then they start. Yeah. Well, that's good. And, you that's, know, I have yeah, some that... people that, you know, they like only red. So if there's a red quilt, okay, they get first dibs. Or we have some people that only like modern. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of pass it around that way. Yeah. Well, it's great that you have because that helps build that uh, culture and community at at, uh, at the company. Is if people are involved and interested in it, rather than it's just a place I work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, oh boy, I stitching at work. Wow, I'm jealous. I can't do that. <laughs> what don't and I also don't. One thing I don't do is I don't take lunch breaks. Yeah. So, I mean, I go, when I get here, it's go time. There's no lunch breaks. There's no, that's just, I don't know. That's just how I operate. I, there's not many breaks. Yeah. Yeah. Your husband interested in stitching? Does he at all? Or is he just happy to have the, the tech stuff to do? Oh, no, he doesn't stitch. He doesn't, um, he'll ask me every now and then, you know, oh, what are you doing? I don't think he's ever watched a live stream in his life. I don't think he has a clue. Um, Kind of, you know, like what I'm stitching, what I'm stitching for. Um, you know, sometimes he does, but most of the time he's just working. He works a lot more hours than I do, and I work a lot of hours. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And in between there, you're raising well, how many kids? We have four kids. We have one girl and three boys, and they are going crazy right now in this quarantine. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that. Yep. Let me out. <laughs> yeah. Well, well and they, yeah, miss their friends too. Yeah. 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 I mean, everything, their whole, you know, any extracurricular activities, anything, it's all gone. And we don't have a pool. We don't have a trampoline. So we have, um, they're doing art a lot, which is great, but it's so hot outside that now, you know, they're not outside as much because it's just, sometimes it's just too hot to go outside in Texas. So we gotta, we're going to have to figure something out. We've been looking for a trampoline, but everything is sold out. Like we went, you know, when everything opened in Texas, the first thing we did is we went and looked for a trampoline. And there is no, there are no trampolines in Austin, Texas. <laughs> so we're, we're looking for some different things. But, but yeah, they're definitely, they're definitely, I would say they're bonded more now, which yeah. is kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting as, as this progresses and, and we emerge from, whatever condition we're in somewhere down the road, uh, it's going to change families. Yeah. It's spent a lot of time together. Yeah. It's going to, yep. going to be interesting. So talk about your actual stitching, uh, use a stand stitch in hand, uh, hoop. What do you, what do you use? So when I got back into cross stitching, I used a Q snap and then Priscilla and Chelsea came to film with us and, I said, can you just show me how to stitch in hand? I don't understand. And they just sat with me and just kind of made me do it. And Chelsea finally, I was just so, I just said, I just don't think I can do this. And Chelsea was like, you're Kimberly Jolly. You can do it. So now that I can stitch in hand, I can go a lot faster. So I just stitch in hand and I just have all those project bags and I literally just throw stuff in bags and there's always a bag in my car there's always something extra if I'm in my car my husband's car when we go on vacation or when we did um Kevin drives and I stitch like if we're going to the store like say we're going to the grocery store Kevin will drive and I will stitch hmm. just that extra 10 minutes I mean I never just sit in a car and play on the phone <laughs> so I mean it's just I don't know. It's just the way that my mind works. I'm just always going, going, going. And even if I wasn't doing this industry, if I was doing something else, I would always be doing something. Yeah. You know, if it wasn't that, I would probably be doing crossword puzzle puzzles or puzzle books or, you know, just anything. 
I just don't sit still well, still very well. <laughs> so, so this, so stitching in hand is, is what you do exclusively then? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I can't do that. Got to have, got to have something hold the, hold the work. Can't, uh, yeah, I've tried that. It just doesn't work well for me. I can't keep the tension right. Um, I just, yeah, I can't get comfortable with it. So I, and there are a lot of people who do it all the time. Uh, I admire them. It's, um, there's, there's, an, there's an art to that, I think. And it's, um, it's not something I'm able to do. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Do you prefer mostly uh, small stuff or are you um, whatever interests you? I think it's more just design or color, but yes, I do like small stuff and I don't, I've never attempted full coverage. You know, Cheryl, who works for us, she does uh, those heaven on earth designs where yes. it's full coverage and she's actually made me one. She made me one when Emma was born and I don't think I could ever do one of those. I mean, I, I could obviously, but I just, I think I would probably get frustrated, but I like stuff that's easy um, something that I know I can actually finish, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't think I could ever. And then, you know, parking, I've never been able to understand that concept and I've watched so many videos on that and that I am so clueless. I don't understand that at all. I get it. I just have no interest in doing it. <laughs> yeah. Those, those people that have 15 or 20 or 30, uh, threads all working at once. It's like, Oh boy, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That um, yeah, th those full coverage people—that's a whole different, a uh, whole different mentality. When you know finishing a page is like to everyone else finishing a project. And, oh yeah. And and to keep that going, and of course when they get done, I mean they're just gorgeous. Uh, but oh boy, that's and, and that at some point I think to do them you almost have to almost almost have to learn how to park. Uh, because starting and stopping threads would just drive you nuts. Yeah, and I can't imagine, you know, starting one of those and then just giving up in the middle. Because <laughs> then you would have just dedicated so many hours to something that you just said, never mind. Yeah. And I have a feeling there's a whole bunch of those out there in the world that are just that. You're like, oh, yep. no, can't do any more of that. Never mind. Yeah. But that, and those are, especially if you do the full sized ones, I mean, they're a huge investment just in thread and, and uh and ground cloth and then on top of that just the time oh man and all that confetti work oh yeah it's uh it takes some persistence but um yeah when they're done they're beautiful they really are and that's you know that something like that yeah you get, whenever you people people have pictures where they finished one you can tell there's just an extra extra beam on their face an extra pride because it's such an accomplishment. I mean, they're absolute works of art and that's a lot of X's. <laughs> yes. A lot of X's. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. You do, a, um, do you still a stitch with a pillow? So I have this little lap stand that I put in my lap and it's got kind of a pillow underneath it. And then that's where I rest my elbows and uh, I keep my scissors on it and my thread. Um, so I do always have something in my lap because I use also use a light. It's called it's called Halo Go. And so it's like a light and a magnifier at the same time. Mm -hmm. I do have really bad eyesight. So I, I do have to have that unless I'm working on 14, 14 count ADA because I cannot see the holes without it. So I yeah. have to have that lap desk for that light to sit on there. Okay. But that, well, that's still, that's a pretty mobile setup then. Oh, yeah. 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 No, that's, um, yeah, that, uh, uh, I mean, for, sometimes I wonder about the way I go about it. I always have to have a stand of some kind and a magnifier and a light, and, and it's not real mobile. And, uh, when I, I mean, I, during normal times, I travel a lot, and so I always have a setup in the, in the hotel room. And when I, when I get to the hotel room, it, it, if I'm going to have time, then I'll set everything up and then I leave it. And then I leave the, the sign on the door. Don't come in here. <laughs> just <Yeah. laughs> don't, just don't, I'll be fine for two or three days. Yeah. And cause I just have to have that equipment cause that's just the way I'm comfortable stitching. And it's, yeah, you know, it just speaks to everybody has, has their way. And, 
know, you just have to do it that way for it to work for you mentally. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was interested, um, the, the aura floss, because you're the only person I've ever heard of that uses aura floss and I don't know a thing about it. So I wanted to make sure and ask you about that. How does that come into the picture and what, what is the source for that thread? So Aurifil is a company that they have been in business for a really long time. They're based out of Italy and the two original owners, they were, um, it was two men and they basically did a hundred percent cotton thread for making suits like high end suits. So around the same time that I was going to lose my job, they were thinking, okay, all these high end suits are not going to be very easy for us to sell anymore. So Alex, who is a second generation owner of that company, one of the owners, second generation, he just started looking at quilt stores and started going to quilt shows and he was showing, you know, 50 weight thread, which is what you use to quilt. And there were so many quilters who wanted an embroidery floss and he made one about five years ago. And I really like it because it's not very fuzzy. So it doesn't tangle on me and it doesn't shred as much as DMC does. And I like that it's on a wooden spool you know, people say, oh, it's more expensive, but it has a ton more thread on it. So by the meter, it's actually cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, and I just like to support Arfil because, you know, I've been working with them forever in the quilting industry. And I like the, I like the fact that when you're stitching with it, little pieces don't shred off. You know how sometimes you're stitching and you'll have like little pieces come off. That doesn't seem to happen for me with Arfil. Mm-hmm. So it's a much more durable thread then. Yeah, it's really strong. It's less likely to break too. Mm-hmm. And uh, an equivalent color array? I think they have 236 colors. So That's less right. than DMC, but um, I think they have better aqua. One of my, Probably my only complaint about DMC is they have the worst aquas. And so <laughs> I that's my favorite color. And anytime I'm doing something, I'm going to start with aqua. That's just where I will start with aqua or pink and go from there when I change colors. And so I love that when I'm looking at RF loss, I know exactly where their aquas are and they have better aquas. So it's easier for me to pick from their color away because they have the better aquas, which is like my color. So, yeah, yeah. Does the does it mix well if you if you're mixing uh, different threads? I mean, it sounds like a thread that that's that's that durable would have a very different look and texture to it uh, next to cottons or or silks. Does it uh, mix well? I think it mixes well. It looks the same as DMC. It's 100% cotton. It's just um, a little bit thinner. Mm-hmm. I've never been one that mixes thread within projects but i don't see why you couldn't i think cheryl has done that before okay and then are you a a, a ada stitcher linen stitcher what uh what's your preference are you all over the road sure okay i like ada i have started using lugana but i definitely ada is definitely my favorite because i can go so much faster i can probably go twice as fast on ada than than Lugana. Now, linen, I have never tried it. The great thing about Cheryl is that is all she stitches on. And so when she brings that in for floss tube, I can show linen all day long without having to do it. <laughs> it is, um, I don't think I could see those holes. Uh huh. So okay. um, I like 14 count Ada. That's my, you know, my first choice always. Yeah. And I know some people are just like, that's not really you know, that's, that's not the best. And, you know, there's all those Ada haters, but I'm an Ada lover. Yeah. I've never understood that. Yeah. It's, it's whatever you wanted, whatever you want and uh, whatever works for your project and the look you want. I don't think it matters, but, uh, um, yeah. And you know, I like, I have to be efficient and I have to go fast. You know, I'm not, you know, a lot of most, all the time I'm stitching for work, so it's got to get done. It's not like I can wait on it. So if it's on Ada, I can do it so fast. I mean, I could almost do it in my sleep. Because, I, I mean, I'll watch TV when I'm stitching. And um, I'm doing a couple of things. Mm-hmm. You know, when my daughter, you know, she's not, a, they're not um, obviously doing this now. But my daughter does dance conventions. My sons play basketball and baseball. 
And I tell you, I am in those stands at those baseball games stitching away. <laughs> and, you know, when they go out to bat or something, I'll put it down. But people probably, I mean, there's so many people that give me these funny looks like, what are you doing? Like, I will be at a dance convention in the dressing room, sitting on the floor with my lap desk and my light. And um, I just go watch my daughter's dances. And then when she's not dancing, I just sit there and stitch. Yep. Because, you know, what else am I going to do? Go watch 50 dances? That drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, but that's the thing. With, with four kids, you get a lot of that downtime. You have to be there. You want to be there. But, uh, yeah, your kid's on for two or three minutes, and the rest of the time is just, uh, yeah, that. that yeah. Uh, so you might as well make use of it. Yep. No doubt. Well, I, I mean, you see... You see parents at those kinds of things, uh, reading or, you know, some people just, some just talk or for yeah. some people, I think it's just a, a time to be alone. <laughs> just leave me yeah. alone. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of people like it for social hour and I am, um, I'm, I don't want to say I'm a shy person, but I pretty much stick to myself. And so I, I like the stitching cause then I don't have to talk as much. <laughs> Because then everybody kind of leaves me alone. Even though I like everybody, you know, it's just, yeah, I don't want to talk for, you know, those dance conventions can be eight hours. I don't want to talk for eight yeah. hours. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that would be frustrating. What did I get out of eight hours? A tired tongue. Yeah. Thanks, Kimberly. Enjoyed it. Learned some things. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. And thanks to everybody for listening.